Now we will talk about how to make a 3D model out of a protein. So the idea here, as I mentioned many times before, is that you start with uh, finding a homologous template. So a protein structure, a protein of known structure that is homologous to your sequence. And then you take this, you make an alignment and you use it to make a model. So in principle, this seems easy, but there are a few steps to go through and a few bottlenecks to know, to know about. So for the first types of models we had, protein was just some kind of models that were actually uh, made even without a computer. So this is the uh, model of sperm, whale, meth, myoglobin. So this was built into an electron density. So you had an electron density, you try to build a model and put all the atoms in space. So this is also kind of modeling, but it's not the type of modeling we're talking about today. So why do you want to do modeling? Well, basically the reason is that but still it's quite expensive and difficult to get a protein structure. I mean, the methods are getting better and better, but uh, in comparison to getting the sequence, particularly from DNA sequences, the, the, the cost is much, much higher. You can sequence a human genome for $1,000, but average cost of a protein structure is probably $100,000. So, and of course, a human genome contains 20,000 proteins. So that means that we can basically get 20,000 protein sequences. So it means it costs uh, 0.05 per so it's a factor, or at least a factor of a million in between the cost of sequence and, and, and the structure. On the other hand, most of the protein, start, protein in my body looks the same as in your body. So uh, even if there are different one or two amino acids here and there, they are very similar. So you can actually model it quite well by using homology modeling. And probably at least about 50% of the sequence today can be modeled by homology modeling. So this is just to show what the gaps are, so the number of sequences you have, is, even in Uniprot, you have millions of sequences, while the number of structures are in the order of thousands, probably hundred thousand a bit more today. So you want to bring this gap together. If you look at the log plot, it doesn't look that bad, but still you can still see still that the sequence database grows faster than the structural database. By about, by the fact that there are two in log space higher, so at least there are two orders of magnitude difference now, but uh, and there's probably three orders soon. And but both have an, have an exponential decrease. There has been a bit slowed down the last years. Some large initiatives for for the structure has been uh, lost their funding. Of course, it's, it's worth to reconsider that actually the sequence database is a unique thing. There's nothing else based in human history that has been growing so fast. The only thing that you can compare with is the early arrival of web sites, basically. So the whole idea of homology modeling is actually that you have what you can call folds, so protein structures are similar. So here are example two protein folds that are actually quite different to proteins. This is the one B for R and one R of C folds. But even in these cases, when the structures are very, the sequences are very different, actually the core of it, this is the part that is marked red in both these proteins, is very similar. It's basically a barrel of sheets. So you can superpose this, and then it's just the other part of it additions to it. So there are these kind of core folds that are very conserved for a long time in evolution. So if you use this modeling, you can do, you can actually copy the template structure to a query sequence. So th there is actually a hierarchical way of doing this, we'll discuss it more later, but basically you have some classes of proteins, you have some architectures of folds that are, like, that's, some of them are very common, like tin barrels, sandwiches, rolls, etc. And then you have some particular more folds, and then you have homologous superfamilies that are all related to each other. And the whole idea is that the number of folds is probably not infinite. It is being quite few new folds the time in the last few years. It's probably large and it might be unique things in the variation, but it's probably not infinite number. So the, all we need to do is map all the sequences to these folds and then we would solve how the structure of all proteins, at least an approximate, approximate model.